Hello drummers, today we're going to be looking at the groove for Manic Depression played by the inimitable Mitch Mitchell on Jimi Hendrix's 1967 debut album Are You Experienced? It's basically a 3-4 jazz waltz played a little bit heavy and uh, it's a great one to learn uh, among Mitch's classic drum parts. It's a very famous thing that every drummer should know how to play. Here's a quick demo of how it sounds. Let's take a look at what's going on in this groove and uh, while you're watching this and being entertained and hopefully learning something don't forget to give me the old thumbs up if you like the video and uh, you can subscribe to my channel to be informed of whatever's coming up in the future and if you need some lessons if you'd like some help from me you can look in the description and get my contact details and uh, I can help you out in lots of different ways over the internet. To start with, I'm just going to demonstrate the individual components, what each limb is doing to make up this groove. Uh, and then I'm going to show you step by step how to play it. And uh, you'll be able to play it whatever your level of ability. Uh, and even if you don't want to go through all the steps, if you feel like it's not for you, you'll be able to play this song. Groove is in three, four. So we would count initially one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And then if we need to count the triplets, which we will do at various stages, we're going to count one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a. There are other ways to count, but this is uh, the one that works for me right now. So first of all, the ride, uh, we've got, oops, we've got this pattern. One and two and three. One and two, three. One and two, three. And it goes like this. The bass is going to join in on the one, two, three, like this. That's the easy bit, right? After that, we've got the left hand, or whichever hand you're using, but the hand that plays the snare is going to be playing the snare on the R uh of each triplet for the first two uh, beats. So one, uh, two, R, uh, and then the and R uh of the triplet on the high tom on the third beat, like this. Finally, I'm gonna add the hi-hat with my foot on the two and three, the second and third beats. Uh, this is entirely optional. I've got no idea if Mitch Mitchell is doing this on the record, but it kind of seems to fit in with that whole jazz swing, uh, sorry, rather jazz waltz type of thing that we're looking at. So I'm gonna go one, 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 and so on and so on. Now we're gonna learn how to play the groove properly and we're gonna start off by playing just the quarter notes on the ride and on the bass drum like this. You'll have noticed in my demonstration I was moving between the bow of the cymbal and the bell. I'm leaving that out for now. Okay, so that's our bass drum and ride. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the snare on the R uh of each triplet. So one and R uh two and R uh three and R uh one and R uh two and R uh three and R. Uh. Okay, so it will be like this. It's a shuffle basically between the two sides of the body. I feel compelled to crash at the end of that. Okay, next we're going to change the last beat on the snare to play the and R of the triplet. Okay, so again the snare will be one, two, three, one, R, uh, two, R, uh, three, and R, uh, like, like so.
however long it takes you to get used to that, it might take you 30 seconds and you feel good. That's fine. It might take you quite a bit longer to get used to playing a shuffle between your two limbs if you've never done it before. So don't worry how long it takes. Just get to the point that that feels relaxed. Mm ta mm ta mm ta ta. Okay. Once you're good with that, you're going to move your left hand up to the high tom and play those two triplets on the third beat. So like this. Again, let that settle in. Now with this, you can already play the song, right? So if you can get that up to speed, you're good to go. And so on and so on. Have a go, see if it's comfortable. If not, just practice, stay relaxed, keep it slow until you feel like your body's just happy doing this, happy and relaxed. Now you've got that basic groove together, we're going to add the movement from the bow of the cymbal to the bell. Just to remind you, it's one, two, three, like this. What we're going to do is we're going to get the groove as we have it up till now, just on the bow of the cymbal, and then you can just try and move your hand over to the bell and you might find that it gets a bit messed up when you first try to do it but if you keep it nice and slow and you stay focused you should be able to get the hang of it okay so we're going to do this notice that you've got a little bit of this hokey cokey action happening between the two hands and I found that you know when I was revising this groove when I was working on it the more I kind of focused on that movement I, I, I kind of psyched myself up to anticipate this little you know uncle dancing at a wedding kind of move and uh, not that I would ever um, but you know that, that helped me get the hang of that. I can't overemphasize how important it is to be as patient as you can with each step so that you get to the point that, that whatever you're playing is really settled, that you feel relaxed, that you can play it, not that you're at the edge of your ability about to fall over if a small distraction occurs, if a fly whizzes past your face or something, you're going to lose your concentration. If that's the way you're feeling when you're playing, keep practicing, keep it slow, relaxed, steady. Once you feel like you've got the hang of that movement from the bow to the uh, bell, you can now add the skip note, right? And the skip note is on the R of the one, of the first beat. So we've got one and a uh, two and a uh, three and a, uh, okay? One and a uh, two and a uh, three and a. Uh. So it's like this. And this can add kind of a bit of a headache coordination wise. So you might want to just come back to the bow of the cymbal and play like that. Uh, to get used to the skip note, right? And again, what I would do is I would get going what you're familiar with and maybe try and psych yourself up for the skip note a little bit. Start thinking about it and then try to add it in like this. Um, I can't really uh, give you a visual demonstration of me thinking about it, but hopefully you've got the idea. Once you've comfortably assimilated the skip note, you can go back to the movement between the bow and the bell. And uh, just notice that it's a little bit tricky. You know, you've got the snare drum, you've got the skip note happening at the same time on the bell and this little movement. So again, I know I say these things over and over again, but if it takes you some time to get the hang of it, don't worry, there's nothing wrong with you at all. It sounds something like this.
that's pretty much what Mitch Mitchell is playing groove-wise in the song. Obviously, I'm not dealing with the fills today, maybe another time. But that's, that's the essence of the, uh, the groove of this song, as far as I can hear it anyway. It sounds to me also like uh, Mitch is playing some extra skip notes every now and again, as I was saying. So we'd have one, uh, two, uh, three. Okay, so we have an extra skip note on the R uh of the second beat, right? One and a uh, two and a uh, three. If you've got up to this point and you're feeling comfortable and you can play along to the song and you feel like a little bit of an extra challenge, you can add the other skip note and try and learn how to play uh, in such a way that you can kind of improvise and drop in and out of playing that extra skip note. So that sounds like this. already anyway that's it we've got the extra skip note and again you've learned how to play and drop it in and out when you need it you can tell in the energy of the song when it needs a little bit of extra something on that groove anyway well, that as far as my ears can tell is what Mitch Mitchell's playing on the record but it seems worthwhile to me if you can and if you if you feel like adding a little challenge to this whole uh, procedure it's worth having the left foot in there as well because otherwise we've spent our money on these expensive hi-hats or moderately priced hi-hats in this case uh, and you know we want to get the full body workout whenever we can so we're going to put the uh, hi-hat foot on two and three on the second and third beats okay now what I recommend doing is going back to a basic iteration of the groove so perhaps we're just going to do um, just quarter notes on the ride, just playing the bow and taking it from there. And then slowly, slowly allowing us to introduce the left foot, whatever, the hi-hat foot. You might just want to add the hi-hat on the two and see what happens. Or you could even do the one and see what happens just to develop the control there. But um, I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to play the hi-hat on the two and let that settle in a little bit after having played the simple version of the groove. And if I'm happy with the two, I'm going to add the three as well. So we're going to get one, one, and so on. Let's see what happens. Okay, there we go. Just about managed to play the hi-hat on the two. So now we're gonna try the two and then the three. Is that working? Are you feeling good? Is your body in balance? Are you feeling like you can get used to all of this? If you think, no, bloody hell, mate, that's too much hard work, you can leave it. It's not going to have any real effect on anything. So don't feel pressurized into doing every detail of this video. Um, if it's going well and you, you like the idea of that, um, now you can sort of bring in the skip note and then bring back the bell, uh, bow, bell, bow, bell, bow, bell, bow, bell, the movement between the bow and the bell. Okay, so let's see how that goes. Uh, so we're going to start off the basic groove, adding the left foot and then adding the skip note and finally the, the movement between the bow, the cymbal and the bell. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. was a, a warranted crash there in my opinion because that more or less wraps this video up uh, those are all the ingredients you need to be able to play Mitch Mitchell's beautiful 3-4 groove on Manic Depression by Jimi Hendrix um, 
And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you managed to learn how to play this essential groove of the information I've given you. I'm going to add some sheet music that will be linked in the description below for your delectation. And uh, if you enjoy this again, I'll say it twice, thumbs up on the video is much appreciated and please subscribe to my channel to be informed of any future videos that come out. And if you would like some one-on-one -on -one time with me, I am available via Zoom, Skype to anyone anywhere in the world, depending on what time it is where you are. Uh, and that's it. I think you should uh, go off and practice now.